Um, okay, so ve very briefly, we are still waiting for an update from McClure in writing, uh, but things they're still on top of trying to figure out what the long-term fix issue is and fix is. Um, the latest we were hearing is it may turn out that that holding tank was smaller than we thought all along, which is causing the pump to work harder than it should to hold what we thought was a 10,000 gallon water tank and might only be 3,000, which I have no idea how we got to where we are, but we're cruising along. We have temporary water for as long as we need. And the town is uh, the McClure and the Board of Selectmen are completely on top of a number of tests being done but as soon as I get something in writing I will forward that to you all and I apologize that we don't have it by now I'll have Steve type something up if we don't get something from McClure within a day. Hey Deb I don't want to interrupt um, but Lori go ahead we have Joe and Brian and if you have to leave go ahead. I'm going to stay a little longer. Okay. Okay um, the same Thank you. thing I want the main reason I wanted to get you all as soon as possible is on what does seem to now be an approved, I'm, I'm sorry, a, a, an agreed upon uh, recommendation that I would like to make to you folks. We have, as, as you can expect, when we had two days of no school, um, staff began once again feeling disappointed and and a little um, a little stressed over what would have what would be two years in a row of them having to have school and stay in session longer than the rest of the district. For those of you that were new last year when Wales was in Brimfield, we had this water issue and had a day that both Wales and Brimfield needed to make up at the end of the year, which was disappointing because everyone else in the district was out and I can't remember the dates, but are most of you all aware of that situation last year? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, so, um, I, I would, I'm sure it's no surprise because Wales also had an extra day while they were moving into Brimfield that they were allowed to make up on Good Friday. They, the Wales students and staff came in for half a day on Good Friday so they could at least be on the same calendar as Brimfield. So of course it was no surprise at all when um, some of the staff members there in Brimfield immediately started wondering how they could try to quote make up these two days and, and Good Friday was thrown out. So I have had a number of conversations with Heidi which I thought might join me but she doesn't need to at all because even right through Christmas Eve, we were communicating a little bit and the majority of the staff are on board with what I'm gonna to recommend to you folks, but it's really, it, it's really at your level to approve or not approve a calendar change for the current year, April 23. Um, the proposal would be, so there's two things at, at hand. It's making up enough time to consider the students having 180 days of schooling and the staff having 183 days of work because that's what you pay for is 183 days in your contract with the professional development days. So um, here's the proposal. The way to get students to 180 days and have them leave the same day as every other student in the district would be to have school on Good Friday for half a day. They'd be dismissed just before noon. Last year, it was not a problem when we did it for Wales. Folks still can honor any, any religious uh, traditions they might have on that day. We bring kids in, we dismiss them half a day, and that checks the box as a day of them coming in and having some education. The other day now being talked about is we have a PD day coming up on Monday, uh, sorry, Friday, January 13th. It is a full day that students are not to come in and staff is. If we 
allowed a we in Brimfield said students are going to come in for half a day, that would get students to their 180th day. The staff would work teaching in the morning and then participate in the district-wide PD in the afternoon. Any questions thus far? Would that impact any of the CUs or any of the requirements? To, you know, if the teachers have been planning for getting their numbers, you know, what they have to meet for whatever the year, like, would that impact? Sure. Those? Sure. Um, it, it might decrease a morning session of few uh, PDPs that they might have gotten. Um, but again, they have five years to get their PDPs. And we do our best to offer as many as possible. We don't have the obligation to offer enough for them to completely get it. We do. Many folks use other sessions also. And if down the road there was a session that looked like it was going to be very, very um, impactful, we could get that facilitator to come in maybe one of the half days to go to just Brimfield and give them that same content. Um, but the staff's okay with that because they're still going to be able to participate in a number in the afternoon. And it's not going to put anyone's license at risk at all. Okay, I didn't know if, you know, the end of the five years is one, you know, <laughs> two people that won't get it, yeah. you know, that's all. I just no. You know what, Brian, we have bigger problems if they get to the end of five years and they're just two or three um, PDPs short. Folks are, should be much more actively involved in, in keeping up with their credits than just these PD, PDP, uh, these PD days. So I'm, I'm not worried about that. I think that'll be fine. Um, the bigger issue is that if I'm, um, I'm just trying to make sure there's no one in a cart. The bigger issue is that at that point in time, um, someone is trying to get in. Let me try to find it. Who do we not have that might be asking? I don't have everybody's phone numbers. It might be Heidi. Okay. Let Sorry, I don't, I don't have Heidi's that. number. The only number I could say would be Eric, but Eric's at a funeral, so I, I don't think he would be trying to get in. Oh, I thought I uh, had Heidi's number. Seven three three five eight four zero is Eric's. I don't know if that looks like Eric's, but. No, I bet it's Heidi. I bet it's Heidi. Um, so I will try and talk and text at the same time. The, the, the issue, the bigger issue, that takes care of the children. My issue becomes, at that point in time, that PD day does not, quote, make up any of your teacher teaching time. It's already a full day that is on your calendar, right, um, for them to work. That's one of their 183 days already. So, in essence, they would still, if, you know, if we wanted to, you know, follow the letter of the contract, they technically would still owe us, and this is the professional teaching staff, your, your support staff we handle in different ways. Um, sometimes they go home on half days, sometimes they don't. We can make them things up, not a problem. Um, yeah, I'm going to send it to Heidi. Um, the problem is at that if we do what we just said to take care of the kids, we, the staff would still owe a half a day because we only did kids for half a day of Good Friday and we wouldn't ask the staff to stay for the rest of the day because it's a religious holiday. So that other half a day would be owed and still a full day because we're saying they're gonna do some teaching in PD instead of all PD, which you know I will say as generous as I want to be, I still personally struggle a little bit with saying professional staff are gonna have one and a half days left to work to get their same salary. And I, and I think it's a respectful salary. In talking to Heidi and Brett and uh, Brian, our recommendation is that I would feel comfortable saying every professional staff member would still owe us 1.5 days 
to be served at some point over the summer from the time the day gets, uh, the, um, the year gets out in June to the time we start in August. And that can be in a number of ways. And Brian would keep track of it. That can be someone producing or telling him about lesson plans that they created for some new lesson they're going to bring in. That could be them having small group meetings to prepare curriculum. We do know every math teacher across the district elementary, we were going to be having a few hours of professional development and training to prepare them for um, a, a, a math pilot that we're going to need to run for grades K through five, and we just started a new program in six. So we could easily, and, and talking with Heidi, she agreed and understood, we could pretty much cover that 0.5, that half day, with that math training that we wouldn't have to pay them to do otherwise, and we would be looking for them to come in the end of the summer anyway. Um, but if staff is willing to work with Brian, and Brian is willing to track However else they're all going to work another day, I think we could get to the place where we could feel good, like you're, 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 quote, getting your money's worth from your professional staff, but we're still working with them to be able to have them finish their school year at the same time as all the other schools and districts. Questions? Have I lost any of you? No. Um, no, the only question, so we're looking to give them uh, 1.5 days to make up that time during the summer, whether it's for whatever, as long as they touch base with Brian, then that yeah. would be what it is. The half a day, the other half a day is being made up on, I'm assuming the 13th of January is what you're saying, right? Because there was no good Friday was knocked down, correct? Right. So the urgency kind of for this meeting is if we're going to all of a sudden take a non-school day on January 13th and turn it to a half a school day for students, we want Brian to message that this week so folks can start thinking that through. And he would include the note about Good Friday. Um, but it really is about making sure families have enough time to know we are going to have a half a day of school on the 13th. Staff was coming to work that full day anyway. That makes sense? It makes sense to me. It's, it sounds good. And Brian, thank you for the extra effort and that idea. Sounds good to me. Yeah, and it's not a um, huge staff. So it's easy enough right. for him to track. It's the professional staff that we all want to feel, feel good that, you know, we, we respect and honor contracts. Um, but we certainly want to be as creative as possible to give them and, and, yet, and knowing it's the second year in a row that we're kind of kind of mixing up calendars for this. And um, I want to also mention this being a former teacher. Uh, most teachers would love that extra time to collaborate with their peers. Yep. On planning. That, that's what we thought. That's what we thought. A lot of, quite frankly, a lot of times this type of work happens anyway. Correct. So um, if that is the case, all that being said, unless Heidi, I know Heidi's there, but she is off sound and off camera. Feel free to chime in if you feel there's something you want to say, Heidi. I am here. I made it. <laughs> I was Yay. just thinking, huh, wonder what time that meeting is. <laughs> Um, a lot of staff expressed interest in going to the afternoon of the professional day as well. So, you know, the, the makeup time does, I'm going to say decrease a little bit then because a lot of people were very interested in still attending in the afternoon. So that was a really, really good sign. Yep. So all that being said, when it sounds like, um, a majority of the staff, are, are, are good and like this offer. What I would be looking for is a vote from school committee to alter the FY23 calendar for Brimfield Elementary to have Good Friday and January 13th be a, uh, a school day, a half a day, both of those days. School committee. What did you say, Brad? 
So, um, so it's going to be a half a day for Good Friday and then half a day for the PD day on the 13th, correct? For the students. Right, for the students, yeah. yeah. And the teachers are okay with Good Friday also? Absolutely. Yep. Yes. yes. So they're going to have a half day on Good Friday? Correct. Correct. Sorry, I first heard that they didn't want that, so I was confused a little. Sorry about that. Oh, no, they did. Um, in fact, ironically, we did this for Wales last year, but I, just to complicate more, last year, Wales lost a day when they moved into Brimfield, and then both Wales and Brimfield lost one day because of the water problem. So we gave Wales the Good Friday day so they would be on the same calendar as Brimfield. There was a brief request from Brimfield last year to have the Good Friday Day, but that would have put the two schools in that one building on different calendars. So we all realized that was not the right thing to do. And the, the middle school and high school will, will not be in at all. Correct. Okay. Neither of those days will they be in. Correct. But the buses would run and everything. I'm just like thinking like families that have yep. both just, you know, Middle school, high school, their home, and and yeah, okay. Yep, yeah, yeah, you yes, it, it, you might be implying what um, what is a concern if it was the flip, if we were looking at having Pantasqua a half a day and not the elementary, that certainly could have caused some issues with daycare. But this should not be a daycare problem because yeah. the big kids are going to be home all day. No, nope, that and that makes sense. That's how I was just wrapping it around my head. Yep, yeah. yep, okay, yep. Yep. So I think it will work out well. And if um, assuming you you vote and you're in support, Brian would be during this holiday break communicating with families, and I would be communicating with the bus company. I'm going to leave the meeting, but it sounds good to me. It sounds very creative. Thank you. Okay. Boy, I kind of would like to have gotten her on as the positive vote, but we all know that's how she would have done it. <laughs> Did you have a motion or <laughs> I'll make a I'll make a motion. Can I make a motion as the chair or do I have to make some? No, I'll, I'll I'll make I'll make the motion okay. and then and then you can re, you know reiterate it and we'll go from there. Okay. I can, so I can I second Brian that motion. Then we'll consider you a second. Sure. Okay. And I have Jen, Brian, and Joe able to vote. So all in favor? Aye. 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 And that, that's three ayes, and there's only three of you, so there can be no opposed. And we'll consider that a done deal. And we'll start getting communication out ASAP. Okay, I, I would like to walk just a little bit back to the well. Yeah, let's yeah. Then say sorry. Um, go down again. <laughs> yeah, the thing that I have with the well is have we been talking to the town in regards to paying for this? And and Steve, I'm not sure where our budget is paying twenty five hundred dollars a week for water that's supporting both the safety complex and ourselves. Um, so I just have a question on this uh, the yeah. that portion. That's all. Yeah, I am. Um... We've got a little bit of room in the budget, but since the get-go, the town has pretty much been saying, send the bills to us okay. um, for half a second when there was some implication that something might have been at the fault of the school. I was a little worried, but that has been cleared up. That was a misunderstanding. The last email that went to all of you regarding toilets running was cleared up with the Board of Selectmen and McClurg on the same call as Steve to say, no, that is not the cause for this. And anytime we find a toilet that the flushometer is stuck on, that building is very good at immediately notifying um, the custodians and they either repair it or turn it off. So that is not the problem. Um, but as far as the bill, we haven't seen any yet, Jen, but I'm also not hearing any major concerns on the town's end. Okay. And when, and again, when right after I'm, the holiday, you're going to meet Go with ahead. them after the holiday, you said? Yeah, I, you know, again, as we said, McClurk had kind of told us that they would give us a full write up 
before the holiday break, which we thought would be great um, with everyone on it, but that didn't happen. So we'll follow up with them. And if we don't get anything from them, um, I've asked Steve to type up everything on the phone call he was with them and and send it to you and copy them, which would then be them reading it and seeing it and agreeing with his summary of everything. Okay. And we were still, we're still waiting for word from them on final results of fracking, whether that helped. And they're the ones that discovered we probably have a smaller tank than we thought we have had all along or the town thought we had. So that could come into play, but we are, they are on, they were there daily last week and I know are around this week. So we are, we are pretty much um, at McClure's mercy, but they are very knowledgeable and I feel pretty comfortable having them run this. Okay, so if it turns out in the end that there is a uh, discrepancy with the tank, are we just going to fix that issue while we have things going on? Well, uh, that again, that is up to the engineers. I don't know enough about what the process is to replace that, and I suspect that can't happen during uh, actual school time, so that would have to be something planned by the engineers. Okay, all right. Thank you. All right. No, not a problem. And everything that we hear will forward to you. Perfect. Thank you. Sure. So anything we, else for this morning? No. Not here. Thank you. Okay. All right. Then, you know, with any luck, you'll hear from me at least via email again during the holiday break because anything I receive on the topic, I'll forward to you. But, um, we probably won't have a need to actually get together and talk or get any more votes, at least for the rest of this week. And then we'll touch base next week. Perfect. Thank you very much, Deb. Thank you for taking care of this. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Actually, I suppose I should have, I suppose we should have a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I second that. Everyone in favor? Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Excellent. All right. Thank you, folks. I hope this wasn't too disruptive to your, your um, fun time with family and you can go off and have a great remainder of the week. You guys too. Thank you. Happy okay. New Year, everyone. Thank you. Bye -bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thanks. Take care, Heidi. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Heidi. All right. No problem. Bye, folks. Bye. Bye.